Hey, welcome to a very special banter and chance. We've got an expanded crew here tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we recently celebrated our 20th episode and one of our crew uh, uh, texted me today and let me know that we are 10 days away or nine days away from our six month anniversary as, as a, a D and D table. So that's really exciting. So, you know, first thing is uh, congratulations to all of you and thank you very much for, for coming here tonight. Um, well, we're soon uh, going to welcome some new players, but I thought, and we thought as a team that it was high time that we took a look back and we appreciated, you know, what's happened in the last 20 episodes. Um, if you're new to Banner and Chance, this is an opportunity for you to get up to speed uh, and step into the next few episodes that we're going to be doing. And this, what is amounting to a season two, step into it knowing where we've come from. Um, however, if you've been with us for a while, we hope that you will sit back and enjoy this with us um, as we take a step back from the table and as players uh, and teammates uh, take a look at what we've done and really step back and have a chance to appreciate the story. Before we do, um, I think we've had a number of, of different pieces of art and whatnot created, and we're going to run one of those now, and then we're going to come right back and we're going to say hi to all the players. Okay. <laughs> The gods have other plans. Well, I hope each of you see yourself uh, in that our original three that are here. Um, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's say hi to the players. Um, hey, Luna, how you doing? Luna plays Geen, the Kensei monk, Brad, our dragonborn paladin, and Shady, our street urchin rogue. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, yeah. how are you, Tim? <laughs> fantastic it's good to take a night off D D in a way yeah yes so that's 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 fun um we also have two new people joining us tonight noel hey noel and becca now we're gonna see more of noel and becca in the in the weeks to come um also with us tonight we've got a very special person and that is the producer the producer Hello. is a person that sits in the background every single show. Um, he helps us with putting together the music and the look and uh, everything from our editing to uh, all of those great sound effects that you see. And so, you know, say hi to the producer, everybody. We don't get, we don't get to see him up front very much. Pleased as punch to hi. be here. Hi producer. What's going on? Hello. So, um, yeah, Becca and Noel, we saw your characters or we heard from your characters right at the tail end of of session 20. So let's yeah. let's start <laughs> off the night and take a listen to that. Okay. Approaching the sarcophagus, you said there's a belt around it with a pin through oh. the latch holding the door closed, a thick belt. Okay. Um, I will withdraw the pin and let the belt pull to the ground. The door shifts ever so slightly on its hinges, now standing loose. Now reach. open it as you open this silver sarcophagi and you remove and you see the entrance of it it's lined completely with razor sharp needles and they're standing looking at you it's the face of a young female dusk elf she opens her eyes wide and smiles strangely at you 
Rogar. Roll Arcana very quickly for me, please. Uh, seven. All right. You're unsure. What you see is that she's wearing vestiges of a moon laying on its back and stars above it. Five stars adorn her robes. Gein. You notice something. Like once before, not so very long ago, the feeling of cold steel is against your neck. Razor not sharp. Again. And you hear... Not again. Not the steel is against... <laughs> well then, little sister, what have we got here? <laughs> I don't know, brother. It looks like some new playthings. Ooh. As you hear the voice, Rogar, you turn. <laughs> well then, little sister, what have we got here? <laughs> One more time. I don't know, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there stands a dusk elf with his rapier to your friend's neck. And that's where we'll stop. I used you. <laughs> <laughs> you're going down, Noel. You're going okay. down. Ever, yeah. <laughs> the entire time that was happening, Becca and I were both like, oh, they think it's her sister. They think it's her sister. This is the greatest. <laughs> that was true. Yeah. 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 I was like, when Tim says, uh, Gein, you noticed something. And I was watching Luna's eyes, and her eyes were like, what do I notice? What, what, what do I notice? <laughs> I was like, waiting for the reveal. It was nice. When when well, he said you you have the familiar feeling of steel against your neck, I was like, God damn it, am I gonna get kidnapped again? <laughs> That's funny you say that. Not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I think all of your facial expressions were the best of that moment because it was just a sudden like, oh crap, what? this is happening. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> Maybe we should think about that moment where you've had steel to your neck before there, Luna. Oh, my gosh. Vampires! It's fucking vampires! Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. kidding. All right. Um, yeah. Yes, as you, you open it up, and, and as you do, the man with the blankets is approaching you. And he holds one out, and first he motions towards the, the fire, and, and then he turns back towards you, and the firelight catches your face. The moment the firelight catches your face... The setup. The moment... <laughs> the man drops the blanket. I try to catch it. You do. You catch the blanket. Oh. I'm just going to say. Um, yeah, Kane couldn't hang it. And, uh, and for a moment, like... you, you look up. He is gone. <laughs> Oh, and you f what? and you feel cold steel <laughs> against your throat. Oh, shit. What? And that's where we'll like, end. No! Fucking <laughs> <Stop. laughs> vampires. It's vampires. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> vampires. <laughs> vampires. Right. Thank you, everybody. Um, Hold it. <laughs> so, um, well done on the prison. Um, as we just close here. Oh, right? my head is throbbing. <laughs> I so badly wanted to do this. Uh, all of, uh, four of you are enjoying the heat of the fire. Uh, one, or, well, sorry, I should say two are enjoying the heat of the fire. Two are pacing nervously. One on the periphery, perhaps not far enough for her friends to see, is being held with a dagger to her throat. Fucking knew that was too. That was, this is too good to be true. Too good to be true. <laughs> um, and uh, I will just say, I love um, this part. You feel the slightest bite. <gasps> I do. I do. 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 Again, not of not of teeth. Sorry, Kane. Oh, okay. Um, just of the just of the dagger. Oh, and, and, um, just a slight <laughs> slash. And the world begins to go dim. Well, hey, it's a good time to mention that we had 
you know, two other players early on. Uh, Kelsey, of course, was only with us for a couple of, of, of episodes. And of course, Aiden uh, playing Kane, um, you know, not too long ago that we had to say, say so long for now to Aiden. But, um, you know, he's not gone. He's not gone from our lives. And so I think we may see Aiden and Kane again sometime soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? When you when you watch, when you look back at that, that was episode two. So, you know, maybe to Luna, Brad, and Shady, you you know, that's that's six months ago now. Wow, really? That's yeah. crazy. Wow. <laughs> that was where we found out about the uh, clerics that had made their last stand. Yeah, that's mm. where uh, Peter Mornhell, the 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 merchant captain, um, for sure, and. Um, Anyway, but you know, it wouldn't be a bad time to just also take a look at uh, when we had to say goodbye to Kane and see what you think about that. Now that's a little fresh, and then we're gonna that's take a look, at Clara. The next morning finds you uh, sitting on a loaded wagon. The uh, I should say that whole day is spent with your friends. The wagon is loaded, and the whole time you were setting this up, Tim, I was like, "Wait, I don't understand." Dusk but, begins to approach. Um, you know what's happening? You set off. Aiden had asked me to keep it the do a thing quiet. Thing. That he it was works. Home. You know, and, and we only had a, make it for record um, that entire week time. or so notice. He hasn't spoken to anyone, um, and she seems very that, distant. That he needed to uh, step Can back from the game during so. this time. We were scrambling Can a bit to pursue Gene mm-hmm. and try to find her. Yeah. So as the hour approaches, I've had so much to think about Gene and Kane's relationship recently. Kane awkwardly strode and striding, striding. The look on your face as I was saying these things, Luna, was that there was just so much unresolved. Sorry, but I've I've got to do this. It's just. It's confusing. It's. I don't know how to feel about all of this, but. I know your uncle wants revenge. But that revenge cannot be death upon my sister. Karathor, of course. And I would like to take part in it, but. I can't watch her die over this. I had to find three new bittersweet songs just for this episode. <laughs> I hope, yeah, I, I really uh, do hope that we there is an alternative. But if if worst becomes worse, then that might have to happen, and you know that. Some people, like Tara Thor, can't change, and if your sister did get changed and somehow and can't be changed back, something has to happen. I can't deny Burkle that. I'll be back in I'll be back in Water Deep and I'll be able to look through all the books, libraries, anything that there is about bonds. I promise. Aww. Would be nice if we could find another one of those Aww. necklaces, right? Yeah. But I think there's only this one. And right now I kinda move it a little and it doesn't move at all, right? It can't be moved. <laughs> It'll move, but it, it, yeah. it, it's holding on to your flesh, it's digging into your bones, and it's kind of merged with you, body and soul. And this one's not coming off anytime soon. That's okay. This age looks good on you. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Gene, uh, you, you flirt. Hey, yo. There it is. Yeah, older man. I forgot, I forgot He's I like, oh, you got older. Wait, it's a work now. <laughs> you know that that really I that really was a thing or is a thing. I take out my horn. <laughs> oh yeah, oh no, I, I can see. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it one nice, thing. And it's it's kind of embezzled with uh, the symbol of the spell garden, in it. and I give it to him. I say, if you're ever in need of help, the guard, you need to use this. We had more technical difficulties hey, in this episode than we've ever had. Oh, I'm yeah. so sorry. <laughs> Our stream Rogar was pissed much. right now. Yeah, he was. Down and <laughs> I, I remember her. 
I, I unclipped a little honorary uh, marshal. I thought he was frozen. As I guess I guess I'm going to put him in here for a while. I'm going to give me Rent. Nope, this is the latest going on. Let me see Rent. This is very important. Gotta make sure this town is safe. Oh, I'm gone. I'm trusting you with that. I'm going to give you Rent. This is very nice. This means I'm in charge and I get to tell people what to do, yes? <laughs> well, not not to that regard, but... This is official business! <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, just, just... Oh, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the stepping right in front of you. This is the one you where now. you had to step back, Skeen, Luna, and she steps uh -huh. squarely uh -huh. in front of you. And I had and to roleplay closer yeah. than Gein for the end. I would didn't know this was going to happen, but if I did, I would have stayed. And she's oh, looking up at yeah. you with her brown eyes, and there are tears coming down freely. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was good. She just looks at you, sort of searching your face. I just, go... I go towards her and I hug her deeply. Just you have been probably. I haven't watched this, by the way. <laughs> you've had the you've had the most impact on me from from this whole get go, and you saved my life. I can never repay that. And when I break the hug, I break the tie that binds my uh, spell guard symbol. I wrap it up and I give it to Gein. Give you a necklace. That's adorable. <laughs> if you I ever just need also wanted to say when he was giving her she this, takes, I don't know. She takes it. If Tim put it in there, but Gein gave him a kiss on the it, cheek. Reaches yeah. into. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I haven't watched this part yet. To be a quite withdraws honest. Withdraws a piece of fabric. That piece of fabric is um, looks like a piece of a of a silk kimono or, um, and it bears the symbol of a of a dragonfly and she hands it to you and she says please you remember your promise don't let uh, this be the end it won't it won't you. ever it won't be the end I put it in she steps back as you swing yourself into the wagon. Mm -hmm. And your three friends are standing there. I'll see you all again. I promise that, but... It's been a tough night <laughs> before we get too meta here. Um, you watch <laughs> the wagon trundle down the road, Gein. Words crossing your mind both of you that should have been said and maybe weren't a deep Man, I'm longing so excited for them to meet each other again now <laughs> building yeah. outside you. Saying this again. Feels. I'm just so you glad stand that my was there for that. in Just the orchard among the pear trees your friends behind you <laughs> contemplating the loss of their friend not the forever loss the distance between them Oh man, that makes me want to cry so badly. Yeah, I mean, looking at I, I remember thinking in that moment that, you know, Gein's, uh, her, uh, everything's happening so fast to this character, and it's like everything's just piling down on her. And it's funny mm -hmm. in that moment when the three of you were dealing with the fact that you know Aiden was leaving the game and and Kane was leaving the 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 chapter essentially. You know, I'm thinking, man, and no wonder Gein's angry all the time. <laughs> She's just like, she can't <laughs> well, get your break. Here, here's the thing. I was, I've been thinking about this the last few days about Gein and her, her story. And she traveled for what, over a year and a half, almost two years across the world to a place she has no idea. She learned a whole new language for it. She met Clara and they became real close real fast. And then she met Cain and then Clara died. And then she found out through her mentor that 
he actually sent her to Gein and she thought at that time she was very angry with Clara because of how reclusive she had become especially when she burnt that note and yeah. um yeah so she was kind of frustrated with her and angry with her so when she died she was upset that she didn't know how close Clara was actually to her and she was upset that she was angry with her when she died and then she knew came the second longest and so um when they were I forgot what was the city that we were in before Harrowdale mm -hmm. what what was Cape the name Sorrow. of that place Ipsar. When we were there, she just decided to like the reason why she did the things that she did in that city was because she just wanted to like submerse herself in something to distract herself from the death of her friend. And so that's why she tried to protect Runt when she went into the barbershop and she kissed Kane like oh, out yeah. of the blue. And now that she had all the things happen with her and Kane, especially when Kane went unconscious in Burkle's mind, she started to develop like, I guess these feelings because like he is the closest thing that she's had in a long time to someone who knows her really well. And then when he left out of the blue, that hit her like a, like a truck. And she's like, I lost my friend Clara that I didn't realize who was really close to me. I'm losing Kane, who I may start be developing feelings for. Who else am I going to lose now? Like sh she is in a kind of really shaky mental state. Like mm. she's she's trying to be okay in front of Rogar and Rent right now, but inside she's like. So she's on thin ice. Everything sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, one of those pivotal moments was, was, as you say, that was um, when it really started to go downhill was with Claire's departure. Okay. Let's take a look at that real quick. And uh, here we go. Yeah. Another wave crashes into the, the ship as the, as the werebore screams at you, Rogar, let me go! And you all begin to crumple into the heap as you're forced back from the tiller towards the sidewall of the boat on the aft deck. You look up and you see the tiller catapult Clara forward. It springs her forward as if the arm on the latch of the door and her body literally flies off this, this, this forward deck into the mid deck. She clips the, 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 mast on her way by and then crumples on the riser stairs at the foredeck. You're able to clamber the body up on deck, Keen, with a tremendous amount of work for such a small I person. remember when I found out, I remember you thinking literally the words, she's fucking dead? You are able to clear yourself like when that happens. All of you are able to find your feet. Oof. The hood Blair is down Deathman's over hood. her face. Yeah, I was. A, oh, and oh. I, I wanted to stab Jaren so hard yeah. if he didn't go back for Clara's body. Mm. I mean, didn't I run. Pull the hood. Save him a couple times. I tried to look at it and see if I can find. It didn't work. See if I can see her face. Yeah. Face. Yeah, when not not to interrupt that, but if she is then has been in the water for a while i'll place my hand on top of yours and say perhaps we let our eyes stay closed as you remove her hood and you're all looking down at her face it's mm. clearly clara um but her body's been wrecked and crushed and broken and her half elf features are twisted the face is familiar to you. It's the face of your friend, however brief. But what all of you immediately realize is that it's also the face of the shattered Elven, elven Maiden. Uh, Luna, the one you saw in Ashford. Oh, yeah. I, I knew, I knew it. The one you saw I, I had it in inkling. Gein, and now Gein she keeps chasing is, after us. She's oh. holding her head, like cradling it, and she's oh. bawling. She's crying. Because her last memories and feelings of Clara were not very good. <laughs> Brad. She was yeah, I know. I just think of the same thing. At her. So she is. Why really is this a whole. This was, this was a 
Oh my god, this is a premonition. <laughs> I when huh. you said crushed face, I was like, oh, that's Clara. That's got to be Clara. There's nobody else. I know. I instantly thought of the oh, Geist man. from Asha Benford, and I was saying instantly think, oh god, the necromancer was there from the very beginning. Oh god. What? He's got it dialed in, eh? This has been a sad oh, yeah. session. <laughs> it's yeah. just wow. been a sad session. That about sums it <laughs> up. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, yeah, so thoughts on that. Hey, Brad, what were you thinking when you looked up at the ceiling like that? What was that? I was trying to wrap my head around the fact that we had just lost somebody. Um, it, uh, again, is, is one of those things where you see in the movies where they close the eyes uh, of someone who's just passed away and, and the, the eyes are still open. They just closed the lids. I was trying to keep Gein from having to see that face that we all knew Aww. was was there. But um, crushed, yeah. elven, crushed elven features. Three, three terrible words to be put <laughs> back to back to back. I'm curious, um, Noel and Becca, like in... in getting ready to to join us you did your homework and you went through these episodes when you see that what were you what were you thinking um well i actually found both of these clips and i did them back to back so talk about all of the feels <laughs> <laughs> um you yeah. know it was it's tough for any character death and outside looking in it's not as tough but it's still pretty tough so it was I could feel everybody's emotions coming through and it was, they were great and pivotal moments, but it was, it was sad. Yeah. Yeah. You really tell the difference because like the three of you guys are all just, Oh God, no. And Dean's the only one still talking, but she's like, <laughs> she's just like, I think she's trying to talk to like deal with it where the three of you are just like, no, I'm, I'm just quiet now. This yeah. is too much at one time. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's it's a lot that has had, and it doesn't feel that way because you know we we do these sessions once a week, but it's only been maybe like what since they all five of them met, maybe like I don't know, maybe a few weeks, a month. So oh, well, we've we've seen Goro now three times, give yeah. or take, right? And so there's been three new moons, so it's essentially like we're sort of three and a half months. Wow. But when she died, she only she they had known each other for not very long when she had died. So right. oh, there yeah. are these like yeah, so there are these new friends, and then this one girl who decided to take her under her wing when she came to this new world and she's crushed in her arms and she's so angry at her when she died. Like totally. Oh, it's really heavy. We we had a couple of heavy moments early on there. Um, you know, when I think about to your point, how long, as you say, at that point, I think even with the backstory that you and Kelsey had created, uh, the characters had only known each other for three months. The, those two characters, and then Kane was layered into your story, and we had done all that before we even played as a full team. We were playing little sub sub sections and writing the backstories together. But I mean, we've come a long, long way. And in that time, I mean, we, we've met a lot of interesting people and it's funny because when we have something to deal with, like a departure of somebody or, or even sometimes, you know, we just have life gets in the way and, and one of the players can't show up and we're, we're forced to scrap everything we thought we were going to do that night. One of the things that happens is it, it ends up creating room for pretty in interesting NPCs and, and kind of added desperation sometimes <laughs> but um you know and and these npc npcs give us some funny moments and they give us some pretty deep moments um here's one that uh, you might recall that happened that i would that say was a little you on the hear side. an ungodly scream i try to turn towards it and you do and you turn towards one of the avenues in the town site that scream is made of sorrow and a mother's loss and Rogar runt Cain. You are there right next to it as it happens. 
and Raytheon Fell comes out of the tent holding a doll or what you think is a doll and it's then you realize that it is the body of her daughter and shady your face <laughs> it's going a bit Crush. dark <laughs> it's the only way to say it. Uh. <laughs> it hangs limp uh, the rigor mortis has long passed it's beginning to bloat slightly it's got a grey blue colour so moving in a way that a, a, a body shouldn't move and just dangling like going into a lot of detail there Tim yeah. <laughs> and this tough Ride the line there, half work woman make it deep Comes in and the tears just keep pounding it in are coming down her face and she I started thinking about my towards you and I got she was such a little choke a happy child me. my mother my mother I named her for my mother and I knew that they would never harm her everyone here loved her and even though the the thieves punished me and sent me to Grimshackle, they told me they would see to her upbringing. Who did this? That was what Brad calls the sad music. Oh, yeah. You hear the bell toll from the little ship floating, well, the so little ship floating in the... Raytheon uh, turns to you and says, I need you to bless this child. Take me to your favorite spot. A spot that was important to you both. It was the little hill where we found the cleric. That was her favorite place. She could watch the wagons go by. We would sit there among the flowers and we would count them and in the winter time she would she would build little homes and we would pretend that we were on lookout. And when nobody was around we would light a fire and tell stories. That was her favorite place. We called it the toe. The toe of a giant. Always such a lovely place. Not like now. That tree was beautiful. She could climb on it. I want her there. I want her to see the wagons go by. The dawn is beginning to threaten to come out. Helping Fell back to her horse. Being worthy moments from Brad. You here. make the long ride. Yeah, I'll ride alongside her so that she can hold on to the body and not the reins. Yeah, this is where Easily we saw come back really up the hill out. past <laughs> the dead. We'll honor her first, please. Them. Later. And she starts to cry again. As you close the distance on the toe, you see the dead cleric again, his back turned to you I mean, as he's turned towards the war, uh, war the, the road as a symbol of whatever terror this force wants to wreak upon the world. They would have watched over her, you know. I hope so. The dwarf would have laid down his life for your daughter. She produces, I took this, and it's a small carved knight 
paladin. This was her favorite toy. And she knew she led a thieves' life, but she was good. And you can see on this toy, the sigil is the sigil of a wheat sheaf. Music is so epic. Yeah. Sometimes it and just works that out. Wheat sheaf again. The you reach the toe, and you see your fallen cleric. And what does a paladin of Helm choose to do? Clara. Yes. We'll gather the bodies. Yes. This time I need you to act as an accelerant. I understand. Kane, will you help me? Yes. I will. You quickly gather the bodies, a dozen or so. You lower the cleric down to the top position. Raytheen takes her child, opens the cleric's robe, his cloak, sets her lovingly in his arms, closing his arms around her tiny body, and then she replaces the cloak to cover her face. Please bless them. She falls back towards you, crying hanging off your yeah here we go breastplate rogar please holding her up holding her hand very tightly in mine everyone bow please what are each one of you doing red yeah you see <laughs> <laughs> he actually drops his head he's like yeah okay, <laughs> okay. as in just like how he everyone. keeps like looking back and forth like I, I, I don't too. know Run's history, He's but like, kind of what am I supposed like to do? This. What kind of a blessing? <laughs> then. By the almighty name of Helm. The Watcher. Guardian and Eternal Eye. Please. Take these souls into your hand. and lead them to the high realms where only you can. Clara begins to cast. Cain, what are you doing? I uh, uh, try to uh, assist her on this. With your assistance, this fireball grows in her own hands and she's controlling the element again. When she does, I spit my own flame forth as well. Your flame joins hers. Your soul, Cain, and hers are united for a moment. Rogar, yours as well, and the love of a mother cast forward from her breast. This huge blazing light as if, as Clara has never let go before on her own. She's surprised at it. It hits the pyre immediately. It is engulfed in flames. The flames rise, but not just smoke, a light begins to emanate up into the sky. The mists begin to part. And on the other that side of the path, you can see the foothills. Uh, they are off to your side. They are the foothills you came down through. The sun is just breaking. The dawn has just hit this pyre. And it is a magnificent, if not terrible sight. You're able to see more and more as the heat and the radiance of this fire begin to dispel all the mists around you. You can see 
the light hitting the foothills and the and the the hills that you came out from in between. You know, that's when we introduced that we were going to have, um, you know, this assault coming down uh, from this dragonborn sorceress. And, and I you see thought the to horde. myself, yeah, and I had thought to myself, okay, well, if they're if they bury these bodies or something, um, there's a chance that they're not going to see them, and maybe I'll have to make a different something because I want I wanted the universe to react. And then Brad says. I want to use you, Clara, as an accelerant. And I'm like, oh, shit, I guess that's not happening. <laughs> and then he delivers, you know, what we've come now to 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 expect is this epic type of prayer. And I'm thinking, okay, now there's holy light cast down on this thing. And that and that sorceress is just going to yoink. <laughs> like she's going <laughs> to not be able to ignore this. There was um, so much going on with that that happened. What was, what I was surprised at was everyone was so focused on it they didn't even like really talk about Gene. you just got kidnapped where like where were you what happened oh, yeah. It's like, no oh, yeah, let's the same thing yeah, yeah. the death of all of these like the these people so it was just kind of like what what Gene has no clue like what's happening and then like you have runt there just looking back and forth being like uh, Watching that, I had two thoughts. One was, someone please message me when I'm rocking the boat with my chair. Because <laughs> I was driving myself nuts going like this the entire time. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, uh, when like Wraithing first comes out and she's all sad and stuff, I remember I was like, okay, Runt feels super awkward right now because where she comes from, like somebody dies, hey, sucks to be you. Doesn't matter who it is. So she felt super awkward the entire time. She had no idea how to react to everybody being really somber. And then Rogar is saying this epic prayer and feeling all this emotion. And she's like, what do I do? Is that yeah, the first time Rent has ever seen that much death before? Because I know that was for Gene. That's a very good question. Because hmm. I, I, you should I ask know... her sometime. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah, spin it off. Parking lot, that one there. Well played. Well played. Uh, this is more like evidence that. that shows that it's a good thing that that my character was not there because his <laughs> way of dealing with like pain is just be like, anybody want to hear a joke? You know what I mean? Got a couple elbows. He's not. He's yeah. not good at that. Sheesh, sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it. That's, that's going to be really interesting to see in the future, especially when you've got someone like Rogar, who's this paladin of Helm, who just is so majestic in like everything that he does, like call that whole pyre, and then yeah. recently with the ship, and then you've just got this guy over here being like, "Anyone want a drink?" <laughs> or, or like roasting a marshmallow on said pyre. Like this yeah. is really sad, isn't it? I mean, Brad, you're you're um. <laughs> You've really, yeah, ro, we, you know, we play Rogar. Rogar is, he, shortly before that episode, I mean, he stood up and declared himself that he would be the ipso facto leader in order to sign a, you know, a a, a blood contract, a a uh, infernal, not infernal contract, but a, but a, a magical contract to get the, the party out of trouble. And I mean, you know, here's this this character who's young, he's pious, and he's just trying to keep he's just trying to keep everything not predictable is not the right word, but to to tie things off and to find some closure and to move on and um I think Brad does such a great job of yeah. of having Rogar be like like making decisions, you know what I mean? He Even says though he's so decisive. young too. Well, like that's, he's six that's years what I mean. Old, and it's like, <laughs> oh, he has game. to be like second guessing himself when he makes these decisions, but like you never see it. You know what I mean? No, yeah. that's, super, that's super Dragonborn though. If you read their yeah. lore, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're like they don't try, they do, or they do not do. They don't. Yeah. Do like they're he keeps Yoda saying, "I'm so young. I'm only six years old. I don't have experience." But it's like, dude, look what you just did. Look what are you? Look what you're. Like, listen to what you're saying to these people. You're an like amazing that person. Friggin' prayer, man. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, yeah, just yeah. off the cuff. Yeah, I got something somewhere. Let me yeah. something, something brilliant immediately. That was nuts. That was totally. it, um, it, felt, it felt isolating, actually. Hmm. We expect, yeah. So, I mean, it's funny because we, we, we have... One thing that I've noticed through the last 20 episodes is that 
you know, in that, in that effort to kind of keep on the rails and, and wrap things up and move forward, um, we open up cans of worms in a sense, right? Like the party is doing something and then there's, and, and then it's, you know, and I, I, uh, I like this type of thing, which is why I think you see it. But I mean, we see that we can't escape the consequences of our actions. And there's a reason why, you know, you try to live your, your life on the straight and narrow why the dragonborn does anyway. Um, so let's take, <laughs> let's take uh, a few minutes here to, to dig into one of the, I think the hallmarks of this, there's a few of these, these, can't seem to to keep the skeleton in the closet piece that that shows up and um we got a, a clip here that goes through some of those moments let's see what you think of this q2.1 go q2.1 you go up to this this door and and it's kind of set forward from the wall and uh, very quickly you hear muffled footsteps uh drawing closer um they pause on the other side and then you you hear something strange going on in the background, almost like somebody's moving a box. And uh, this little peephole snaps open. What do you want? Here on business. Business, eh? What kind of business? Business that involves a lot of gold. Gold, eh? Yes. I like that. I like that kind of business. We would. Li- I would like to talk about it more inside. I don't just open this door up for anybody, buddy. What are you here to do? You wanna, are you visiting somebody? Yes. So this was Grimshackle Prison, and they were no. after Kane's uncle. Oh, no, by the looks of you, you're visiting You're visiting that one that crossed Carathor. Huh? Yes. That's you? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I should let you in. When do you... What do you want to give me to see this person? I'll give you 15 minutes with them. 15 minutes with that one. Okay. I'll uh, d- detach my coin purse. Okay, and... As soon as he sees you, though, take off your personal purse. Yes. He's like, yeah. Okay. I'll hold it up and I'll say 15 gold for 15 minutes. <laughs> You've never done this before, have you? <laughs> okay, I'll take your 15 gold. <laughs> 15 gold for 15 minutes 15 gold for 15 minutes 15 gold for 15 minutes and this ha- <laughs> this this portly little uh halfling is is like 15 gold for 15 minutes 15 gold for 15 minutes and he's trapping on me he goes oh man yeah Ukram's gonna like you can I do an insight check just to see like this feels too easy for Clara this something doesn't seem right so. I just wanted to get like a, a feel for the guy to see if he's going to screw us over. Oh yeah, you don't trust this guy at all. Definitely. I totally forgot it was Rogar who started that whole fifteen gold. For 15 gold. Me too. Me too. Yeah, the, I mean the producer just said that as we were putting these clips together because mm. I thought that you came up with that. I'm like, no. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, just you, you did. You just came up with it live uh, based on Rogar's. <laughs> It was a riff. That's or true. Brad's. Yeah. 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 Brad's riff. Absolutely. Um, Brad wanted to kill that guy immediately as soon as he started being a dick to, to I want to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this and this led, you know, we we led from this into uh immediately into another uh meeting that would come back to to bite us. Excellent. So the Minotaur has first action and he immediately tosses the body as a weapon against the the uh a sword wielding um jailer and begins to rampage towards him knocking that jailer off his feet he absolutely skewers the guy that um you were uh, uh you just fired a magic missile at who was suitably distracted and his, so some of the first time uh, that we heard this bellowing over this sirenscape was and knocked down I, is now I was getting all like squirming <laughs> on the top of this horn, <laughs> not quite cold. dead, but up off his feet, as this is his second gourd attack. And I will say, 
he begins to grab both the guard's legs and pull him down, tearing the horn up deeper into the rib cage. Oh. Oh. The producer said to me after this, he's the like, jailer still. So are we going to go for mature um, status? Um, <laughs> little blonde viper down at your, at your one elbow and this, this picking uh, um, halfling at your other one yelling, 15 gold, kill him. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that the mentor is within 120 feet, so I'm going to quickly cast Scorching Ray at second level at the minotaur. Ooh. Okay, he is not love and life. <laughs> yes, um, that's not a thing. <laughs> in fact, you would say he is definitely bloodied and seared. And and now and he's just—he can just well see done. he's like, just, and he's mad at all. Well this. done, beef. It's kind of as a bonus action. Yeah. I look at Rayleigh and I say, "We'll meet you out there." That's it. <laughs> okay, so she's already beaten cheeks for the door. Okay. Um, they can leave us. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we will say that the Minotaur immediately uh, looks down at the 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 dude who just fired the scorching ray and figures he might try to angle for two. He runs as hell bent for leather for um, Kane. Rogar, you now can turn and have reaction on this on this beast. His back is to you. Okay. Um, I won't have him like that. He's got to turn around and face me. Of course. Okay. <laughs> He's like, um, that's one thing I love about Rogar. I don't judge you. He's always so honorable with whoever him. he fights. Sure. Yeah. Roll intimidation. Okay. Is that a fair? That's a fair call. Yeah. Uh, 18. Yeah. Okay. He turns, he, he just screeches to a halt and you can see his cloven hooves are tearing deep furrows into the grounds as he as he stops and then he he brings his head his head back to you and he goes son of helm okay. and he begins to turn shaking his head and stomping his feet we are uh, just messing with this guy now i mean messing <laughs> i mean killing and he and yeah. he is and he is and he is bloody um but you have his attention and he's turned okay. well but i think uh, with with the way in which things are going though um, are you going to be, are you charging him at him at this point or because he's uh, several feet in front of him? Yes. Yeah, okay. Closing the distance after that. Good. And um, <laughs> he turns quick enough to see your strike. Okay. Um, that is 22. Uh, uh, no, you missed. Just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> let go of oh, no. Bless, a first level spell that I had, and do Divine Smite upon him. Fair oh, enough. he's getting smote. He's he's getting smote. smote. He's Could have kept less going and still smote. <laughs> uh. The blinding light of your blade comes down upon his head between the horns. You mm -hmm. can go ahead and tell me what happens. <gasps> okay. Uh, well, as he shakes his head back and forth, it catches him right between the eyes. And I won't let it sink in too far because I want to see the light go out as I make sure to say, <laughs> I'll be you? waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> as he's shaking oh, his Lord. head with these enormous oh, horns. And this you is why our channel is rated M. Yeah. <laughs> you may want <laughs> to see his face. And indeed, you see his eyes, but they slowly get wider because you've cleft through the back of his skull. And now Did the weight of the horns this? literally uh, tear the two halves. The oh, <laughs> oh, oh, they hang front oh. and back. And he sort of pirouettes and spins. <laughs> with this, don't follow me. Don't follow me. Don't follow me. With, <laughs> with this, with this bottom jaw and tongue wagging. Oh, run, and then, run away. And then just hits the ground running. And um, I can't say, run up uh, and they'd kick be him. proud of that one. Um, <laughs> run, to, uh, like yeah, go ahead, run up and kick him. So. He's such a holy man, but he has like the like the goriest kills. You know, yeah, Rogar said the best kills. So here's some backstory on that. That day, I I had bought a fresh coconut for the kids, and I I thought I'm just gonna crack into it and I'm gonna pry it open. I know how to open a coconut, but my knife went a little deep, and 
and I didn't have to spin it. It literally popped open in my head and it, and it was just like gush. I'm like, dang. And so, so I was thinking as Brad, Brad says, I don't want it to sink in too far. And I thought, yeah, but what if it was a coconut and a quake? He's also got these big horns <laughs> and it's like, and it just, you just prize it open. And, I, and so it was, super, you know, coconut was going through my mind at that moment. And incidentally, there's the back story. Yeah. Um, so you had left uh this was session two right and you had you had finished off at grim shackle prison mm -hmm. and then later uh is i had a question for brad sure. about that though like does i don't i don't know if you want to do like the whole shady thing and be like ask in game but was that the first time that rogar has ever really like killed anyone like that is he has he been comfortable doing it, that it's it's one of the things where very early on he learned to defend himself at the abbey because the kids would tease him even if they were smaller than him uh so you learn to deflect and and move uh, and maneuver but um he needed to meet helm <laughs> oh, yeah. so, he, that's he, a nice way needed, of putting it he needed oh, to be helmet. judged yeah but brad's so he, brad definitely a, started oh. something there that uh <laughs> yeah, yeah that, like, that that had uh, rogar, ripples rogar did that had ripples so that he he had never really killed anybody before that not not that gruesomely no uh, <laughs> but you guys were out for practice yeah at that point yeah. so let's take a look at where this led see as you look down the hallway that, that people are leaving their rooms some people are getting up a little later than their than their employers would like and you hear um one of this is in keep sorrow now downstairs saying hurry on you swabs sand doesn't want us being late uh, where are all of you in the room right now kane um, I'm, I'm 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 gonna get i'm getting dressed i got my i'm gonna put my javelin on my back and i'll walk downstairs Okay, you, you walk downstairs. You hear a voice uh, around the corner. Come here, you little runt. And, and uh, it's a really loud, booming voice. Um, um, you, better make, you better make it worth my while. I pulled you out of that goddamn prison. Where is it coming from? Oh. Uh, you can't hear it at this point. It's just Kane that can hear Who it. Who do I see? You go around the corner. Um, um, you're heading the, away from the door that, that Rogar just left, and you can see uh, in this this alcove, this set of this booth, you can see this large set of horns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sitting there and eating. <laughs> and then you hear this voice say, "I gotta get this back to the camp. I gotta get it back to Sand. We'll, we'll deliver this and." Uh, then I'll be on the way, and I'm going to find the people that killed my brother. Now, you brought me those frying pans, right? <laughs> and you hear the voice say, Sure did. And then you hear the I walk say, right past you him. Hear the voice say, you hear the voice say, But you owe me 15 gold for 15 skillets. <laughs> Damn it. Shit! Oh no! <laughs> this is going to so you, you hear you hear some coin. You'll take that, and that's all you want. And so, um, Kane, it's gonna have a confused look towards there. It's like, wait, fifteen gold. Right. For... I want you to go finish loading the wagons, and then we're on our way. And you see this person, and then, and then I'm gonna find the people that murdered my brother. And you see this little halfling jump down, and he starts to pass your way, Kane, and you're halfway up the stairs. Okay, I'm going to go try to find Rogar as quick as possible. Sure, but as you do, you see this guy catches your eye, this little halfling. And he looks at you, and then you hear him clear as day, and he says, 15 gold per murder witness. <laughs> and he looks, and he points right at you. And then he gets this mischievous little glint in his eye. He kind of looks back towards his boss. Okay, I'm not going to. And that's where we'll stop. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, when he said anyway. deep voice and short guy, I was like, it's like, gotta uh -oh. be him. I was uh -oh. like, wait, did we kill him? 
Did we no. not kill him? We, nah. He's looking for the people who killed his brother, which we killed in right. the jail, which right. is an uh oh. <laughs> I thought we wait. I thought I, we killed I, him. I, I, I killed the Minotaur. The Minotaur. You killed the Minotaur. You killed Rogar, the Minotaur. Rogar, Rogar, we're so okay. screwed. <laughs> oh are, you, you, are you still eyes on the door? Well, I'm trying Kane to look in and see out. if there's any yeah, point where he is not watching the door, like back about to get a shave. Because that's uh, he is, in fact, uh, back on a barber's chair, and his face is now covered um, in a towel, a hot okay. towel. I want to go like in, that. and when I go in, I've got one of the bone daggers out, and I'm going to look at the, little, the gnome dude and be like, "Well, before you, before you're able to get a word out." Um, uh, the gnome, well, the gnome dude will freeze. <laughs> Intimidation is that what we're gonna roll? Sure, what, what would this be? God. Yeah, that's sure. I would say intimid- intimidation. intimidation yeah. I would say because that sounds right. Dagger, this fourteen-year-old blonde short girl with, dagger. with uh, <laughs> I don't think Where she's good at intimidation. Dagger. Her charisma is not great. That was oh, okay. such Doesn't a matter. power move. I swear. He's he he uh, he, he not one. So. Oh, uh, he, he's just like he's absolutely frozen. Um, I want he's him to, not saying anything. He's, he's frozen. To, hands on this. I want to person. And, and I want to take his spot. Now, now we're into heartbeats. Okay. I want to take his spot behind the dude. That's so you slowly push this guy o- o to the side, and he lets go. All right. I, You're standing wanna, on the stool that he was standing on, and you were looking down. At him, and you can put your hands on his face if you'd like. Oh, I'd like to put my uh, bone, my bone dagger, like pointing into his, into his. Uh, not stabbing him. I just want to poke it in to get his attention and then hey, see if he jerks. Just or make anything. it clear. Sure. So, as you lift up the, the towel and you place the dagger there. What's the meaning of this, you little whelp? Your razor doesn't feel sharp enough. I want to rip off the towel. With- you so, hey, stupid fist! Remember my fist, stupid fist! <laughs> you little, you little twerp! You don't know who you're dealing with, and your friend lied to me. Oh, I love friends. Yeah, there were three right. of you. Are there five of you? That's, that's right. It. You're stupid. You don't know nothing. You, okay. You don't, you don't know this nothing. This is what's gonna happen. You, I'll tell you this what's gonna, gonna happen. I'm oh. going to warn you one time. If you don't leave town immediately, the next time I find you, I'm going to drain the blood out of your stupid face. Do you understand me? 14 year old blonde hair brother for me. <laughs> Remember that? You took Seems on brand. our prison from us. <laughs> the fact that she gave him a choice first. Mm-hmm. This Minotaur will, will kill me. Yeah. You remember that? Oh, do you want the Minotaur to kill you later, or do you want me to kill you now? <laughs> Badass. Front is amazing. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Screw you. The dialogue is perfect. Okay. You and your friends. You and your friends. My price has just doubled. Uh, you want my silence? 200. Pause for a moment. Striding down the boardwalk on the opposite side of the street, you can see the hulking mass of a minotaur heading towards the barbershop. You can hear a booming voice. Bevan! Bevan, you little twerp, where are you? We have to get going. Do I hear this? You hear this. I'm killing (laughs) him. Yes! (laughs) As soon as he gets closer, I'm going to push Kane down onto the ground, throw his gauntlet at him and say, how dare you? <laughs> you see that everybody starts to sort of laugh and some people start to laugh and a, and a, a, a group of um, uh, passersby start to sort of gather and there's some sailor types that are like, you better watch out, buddy, like this. And you can see that. Runt. Okay, just based on that, because all of this is happening at once. The moment that he and you were going to go through with this strike, I take it. As soon yes? as I heard that minotaur. As soon as you heard the minotaur. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, okay. <laughs> the blade slides up. How far does it go? Uh, until he... Well, um, is he making noise when I do it? Yeah, he'll... he'll you've got him prone, and you have the advantage. So, uh, you He twists his head quickly as you... Um, uh, as you strike. Uh, he is incredibly bloodied, but managed just to wit- twist out of the out of the chair. Um, he is not grabbing for a weapon. He's seeking to evade and head out the door. Um, but what he uses for his action is sh- simply to shout. Ah! Mm. And try to make for the door. Um, as he does... Bill Corrin, the barber, leaps up and jams a wad of hot towel in his mouth. <laughs> and doesn't imagine, doesn't, isn't able to so much bowl him over as push him down onto the floor and now is on top of him squirming. I like how I'm okay? just nodding Holding like Holding his yeah, hands yeah. over yep. top of this wad. <laughs> do what good. you're going to do. Do it quickly. He says to you, Rogar. Um, outside, shaking his head. <laughs> you see the Minotaur look up quickly at the side of this and goes, "Where is that person? Where is that damn Bevic?" And he he says, "If you see him, you tell him I'm looking for him, and you tell him you better meet me at the camp." Okay, I don't want to make a huge like commotion rushing into this barbershop after throwing cane down onto mm-hmm. the ground so i'm just gonna kick dirt in kane's face and say if you oh. ever do that again i'm gonna pull out my sword your neck is mine and i'm gonna go back into the inn i didn't okay. know you had a twin <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> Oh, that was good. Um, yes, and wanna, uh, Aiden. Look at the gnome. And, say... and, and I will also say you saw the... I, I, mean, I am going to say that you saw the through the window, the horned figure pull up, talk, and now has turned, has gone down the street. Okay, so you have that knowledge, right? Okay. <gasps> and pardon okay. me, I interrupted oh. you. Would... No, you, you're fine. I'm just trying to make it as... I'm, I'm gonna try and go with what Rut would do. Um, she's gonna tell the gnome, "Hey, you're not know. so bad after all." And then she wants to put her boot on the back of the halfling's head and stick the bone dagger through the back of his neck. Okay. Now you can go ahead and do give me a quick roll. Asked. Okay. Arch kebab. Yeah. That is. Barbecue uh, for dinner. Eight. <laughs> He <laughs> wrenches free at the last you moment as you're bold, as you're born. Yes. The oh, roll okay. is not sufficient unless you'd like to use your inspiration. Okay. And I would like to use my inspiration. Yay. Go ahead. <laughs> inspiration <laughs> coming through. <laughs> 25. It buries itself wherever in his... Why don't you just go ahead and describe exactly what happens? Uh, she wants to put her boot on the back of his head and then just take the bone dagger and... Right through the back of his neck. <clears throat> and it carves cleanly into the back of his neck. And for a moment, you feel the surge of power run through your arm. And I want to tell the gnome, uh, so sorry about this mess. There's going to be lots of blood. Uh, I can help you clean it up. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, uh, you go up to your friends. Um, hmm. I think I know what to do. Okay, and it's, it's there, not, there was, it's not there... tell uh, anybody, right? That's not what you're going to do, right? You're not going to tell anybody. Oh, about yeah. it. <laughs> Bloody dagger! You, you, uh, <laughs> not gonna, I mean... you don't have to worry about that. Because um, we're friends what, now, yeah? We're, we're, we're friends. We's, we's, we's friends. Um, okay. you, you, you go ahead and uh, I can tell that this guy wasn't really nice. I got a nose for these things. No, yeah, he is there, awful. There, there was a murder in the town last night. Yes. When I saw you yesterday, there was a murder the night before. There oh, was another last night. I, I know, but this this won't be out of sorts. Let me take him. Uh, oh, I can, okay. can I pick him up? And so the gnome attempts to drag the body. 
um, and begins to pull at the. Runs <laughs> kind um, But oh, actually, uh, surprisingly, given that he seems ultra motivated, he, he's able to drag the body. He he uh, puts some towels and whatnot down. Um, is able to drag the blood stain uh, away as he pulls it uh, back uh, using. Runt wants to pull out a gold hips. coin and look at it and say, "Hey." Hey, girl, and flick it to him and say, "Buy He's... yourself something nice, okay?" Gratuity uh, for yes, and he catches it, murder and he pockets it, and you see him quickly clean up the blood at the front. Um, he uses some of the Barbasol from his his combs, and he <laughs> and he he says, "I'll take care of this uh, right away." And he he pulls it into the back and goes back through the um, what appear to be his living quarters, and um, you can hear a door in behind that open up could be a, a cellar door or something along these uh, as he so i mean hey we've you know soon after that what did we see we saw the party come in they boxed up this little halfling and uh wait wait choose that word carefully there they <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I remember, like, after that happened, and Rogar came and Gene came inside, and she was like, Hey, look, I helped. I did it. I, you know, he's not going to blackmail us anymore. And then you just see Rogar and Kane, like, oh, Everybody was God. so mean to her, and she <laughs> thought she was helping. Although I do, I felt bad because, Tim, I felt like you were giving me every chance to not kill this guy. And then, like, like if he had like gone for it, she wouldn't have killed him. But the fact that he was like, nope. Well, I mean, you. so you know, he rolled like a, I don't know, he he rolled like a nat twenty on your on a, on an intimidation oh, okay. check, right. and so I'm like, oh, fuck, he's Jesus. not scared. <laughs> he's not scared at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so 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 I you know, um, there's been a couple of those where where the dice are really, really tough to play with. Like, they're just like, mm-hmm. it's just but I mean, what do you, what do you do? You just, I, I guess that's the game. So we're going to go that way, <laughs> um, you know, but here we, here yeah. we see the Minotaur is gone. You have that knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you that? Like, I'm like, ah, uh, you got to commit. You got to yeah, commit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you boxed up this, you had this you had this little gnome uh, that boxed up, helped you box up this this dead halfling, and he decided to skip town with you. And um, you found your way out of Keep Sorrow, and that created a new problem because here you are now on the trail of this minotaur, um, and you're carrying this crate, right? Um, so the first thing that in this crate was with us for several days right um and there was a lot of questions around this crate i mean we had i remember the talk between luna and 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 shady between Gein and runt about which is it, honestly it, like we didn't put it in the clips here but it it's it was one of my favorite clips that we got sitting up on the instagram oh, runt's runt's logic yeah, yeah when she's like you know well we just we just kill each other and that you know well, that's not what we do here. Well, that's why you've got so many problems. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. It makes total sense. Yeah, I forgot about that. So, do right. I have to ask you guys before I kill somebody, or can I just like? Yeah. But I, I, I feel like that was a really big moment, especially between Runt and Rogar, because they were so close. And then hmm. he just did this thing, and he disapproved of it, and like their relationship after that was, she was pouting for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It took a while. Hey, Brad, uh, what, what would you say there? There was, uh, you know, you were taking, you were taking some heat for a while from, from, you know, or some <laughs> ice. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, and later on, I got blamed for it too, because it was on my watch, <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, <laughs> um, let's, let's, let's talk uh, um, about that. So, I mean, you know, here, here you've got other people, um, uh, uh, writing checks and and sooner or later it's got to come you know the the, 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 
Yeah. I mean, the, the, the chickens are going to come home to roost. I mean, you box up this halfling, you manage to on the ferry, uh, distract the guards, Kane's throwing off fireballs and, and Ron seat and cheese and, and, and stops and Luna and, 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 uh, Bill Korn decide that they're going to dump this halfling off the, off the side of the boat. And so they, they get a sack and they, you know, they get it. They, they, cut it loose we should have checked his body before we let him go Kane's in the background doing some fireworks hey everybody look over (laughs) here wait a minute totally don't be suspicious and so that yeah don't be suspicious that's right and and okay so we're back on track right nope um yeah why don't you roll it (laughs) your treasure is now in the soil, blessed by Chauncey. This is the High Harvestress, and this seems to call the sand. Calm the Grey down. Cloak's camp. You can see him visibly calm down, and when he does, Jaren is suddenly enraged. Enough of this, he says. Don't listen to her, father. Where is the warrior inside you? Why don't you challenge this minotaur scum? Why are you all such weaklings? War Hollow is... Go sit with the children, boy. Sand is. Jaren. Jaren, we can talk about this later. We have much to discuss, my son. I want you to join us. Ah! Maybe you won't be thinking that when I give you your present. You see, uh, Commodore Ward Hollow, I have brought something very special for you. And in to the center of the clearing two of his henchmen bring this crate (gasps) the bottom of which is soaking wet busted we found this along the river Duerthamper not two days ago and I think Ward Hollow it will be of interest to you he sets it down in front of the minotaur what is this? And you bring me something. <laughs> I love Shady's Well, besides eyes. a few rotting <laughs> vegetables, <laughs> take a look. I love the stash. He oh, reaches yeah. <laughs> his fingers into the boards of the top of the crate. Tom pulls back. The nails give a quick creak, and then he pulls the, the, the top off. In this crate is the folded, bloated body of Bevic Grimshackle. <gasps> <laughs> from his breast pocket oh we fucked up Karen <laughs> removes a oh. piece of paper <laughs> when I found this halfling hmm. I thought nothing of it who am I to care if there's Didn't a hobbit in the box to check his pockets. but then I read this as I went through his pockets and I'd like to read it hi harvest mistress if I may what are you playing at, Jaren? she says. You were such a nice boy when you were younger. I remember you running around. The lunches at the, at the temple. What has time and darkness done to you, son? He opens up this piece of paper, hastily written. You can see scroll on it. I, Bevic Grimshackle... With parties mentioned below, Rogar Norixius and Kane Harbinger. Double busted. Do hereby strike this contract to buy my silence. For I know that they committed the murder of Captain Warthollow at the Grimshackle prison owned by my brother and myself, which they then set ablaze <laughs> and burned to the ground. Yeah. I have agreed that they will pay me gold, a regular amount, and he's left this part blank. High Harvest Mistress, obviously looking to finish negotiating. If they fail to pay me, I will be forced to tell Captain Wordhollow, Commodore. Captain Warthollow's brother, Commodore Warthollow, that they were in fact oops, 
responsible for his murder. Signed, Bevic Grimshackle. Forburn Jail of Grimshackle, Grimshackle Prison. At the foot of the Dragon Spine Mountains. Flan. Throw. What? <laughs> And the huge horn head. Oh, no. I've seen you before. You were in the town with me, Dragonborn, and you and your friends. You can see <laughs> High Harvest Mistress step forward, so bad. raise her hands, and then look back right into your eyes, Rogar. Yeah. Shake just, her head. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> None of this would have happened if I just kicked Jaren off that of boat. So, I should have just taken that javelin and then just kick him off the boat. I just loved Luna's reaction when it came up and she goes, <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, right at the part. Yeah. yeah. That was so unexpected. The One, the fact that Jaren showed up. And then when you said that he pulled out the crate, you know, two and two together, it's like, oh man, um, we should have buried it or like put it out in the field somewhere, not going down a river. Yeah, a wooden <laughs> crate on a river. That'll sink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so soon after this, um, you know, we, we, we saw Rogar being able to take down um, Commodore Ward Hollow, uh, the brother of Captain Ward Hollow. And, and, uh, nullify that threat. Um, but in the middle of all this, in the middle of all this, uh, uh, back and forth, um, and we sort of saw glimpses of it. And Luna, you mentioned it earlier in the, in the, in uh, earlier tonight, we had one of the, the sweetest moments, I think that, that, that we had had as a team and it was in episode seven. And it was, it was the moment where episode seven was where, you know, you have this group of strangers that had never played together before. Um, they were, they were now, you know, seven games in. And if any of you have played D and D at all, it takes, it sometimes takes a little while for the team to really uh, begin to get a sense of itself and feel somewhat like it's going to gel. And so this moment took place and it was the moment that I, I looked at and I was like, man, you know, it's that there's some, okay, it's happening. Right. So let's take a quick look at that one because you sort of mentioned it, Luna. And let's let's that's let's okay. Look now. Um I look over to Rogar, look down at his side, don't see run. Again, runs <laughs> not with Oh Christ. You're trying to keep him from well, the bar. She did mention shot. about having a drink. Maybe she oh went my gosh. the bar. The sweetest moment predicated I, I on see murder. The bar. Clearly runs <laughs> not Stay on friend. <laughs> did you check behind the bar? I think Knowing her, oh. she'd probably want to sneak a drink. Go ahead and roll competing uh, deception. deception. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, insight against deception, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Not the best liar. No, I love it. Fix me. Fifteen. <laughs> Damn it, fourteen. This is fishy. <laughs> this is you're like. <laughs> Look, Gene. I'm from Waterdeep. I can sense a liar when I see a liar. Now, where's Runt? Where do you think she is? Oh, no. <laughs> you look out the window. <laughs> he knows. I'm going to pull go Kane. If he if he's heading towards the door, I'm going to hold onto his arm. Well, I'm just saying you can turn your body like this and look out the window if you'd like. That's fine, but if he's heading out the door, I don't want him to okay, go out to the I'm, head I'm heading out the door. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm holding him. <laughs> are, you, are you grabbing my arm? <laughs> I am. Okay. Grab into my hand. If only I Yaki Socks was license free. <laughs> Mother. Yeah. And I walk out the door. <laughs> uh, monk. Uh, a monk. If you want to grapple him. Um. That's a no. Uh, I don't no. want to cause too much tension. Okay. So, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Kane. Okay. And holding his gauntlet. Holding his gauntlet. Yep. I'm Rogar, you to... see, and you see the two of them heading out the door. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to get in front of Kane <laughs> and like put my hand on his shoulders. Okay. Do I get in front of him? Sure. I'm going to kiss him. 
Let's just remind what's what's just let's remind everybody who's watching Kane's ages. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Give me say, uh, 20. I'm, I'm what, 22? I think I was 22, 23. 22. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when we, but I'm sure. I, I'm I think I'm the one knowledge. who's the most embarrassed, it. though. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. Um, yeah. Uh, color would... color rises to Rogar's cheeks. <laughs> sure. Um, Kane, Ow. you've got this exotic, um, Kozakuran now straining up raising a leg and, and giving you a kiss on the mouth what what do you what's your reaction uh Kansas is gonna stand there and then say I know you did that to stop me <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, no my, my idea was to just keep kissing him until like he tries to get away all right I you know what I, I think I think that deserves um I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let you roll uh just a uh, An attack roll it's a man? kiss off. <laughs> kiss off. <laughs> Can I you roll know, a constitution? You check? roll constitution. Constitution on charisma. Let's do it. Real quick. A, a saving throw? Or, yeah, I guess just constitution. Constitution saving through against your charisma check. Oh, yeah, would cool. that be good? Uh, okay. My charisma's not that great, though. It should be a performance. It was a She's wine. Performing. Perform- <laughs> How much did you want? I'm going to use my bean perf- power. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. Oh. Let's see what you roll first. It was What's a one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're going to take inspiration right away. I'm taking inspiration. Go into the right. bean. So, what is inspiration? Inspiration doing? used against each okay. other. So, 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 do I just reroll or do I add a d4? Go on, but let's first hear what Gein's uh, oh, okay. base roll is. I, I haven't rolled yet because I was, I was waiting on what he was doing. Sure. Uh, power. Mine's 18. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the minus one? Yeah, with the minus one. Oh, I rolled cool. a 19. Right. Awesome. Okay, so that means I have to roll a. I have to roll twenty, <laughs> or 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 meet it and beat it. Six. <laughs> you are momentarily um, uh, uh, mesmerized. Music is perfect uh, with the kiss of this, yeah. this young woman. Oh, and the, the romantic <laughs> music builds. Nice. Man, everyone's the producer heart. did. Rogar, just... what are you thinking when you see this? Um, that I have absolutely no idea which end is up and what has happened with the world. <laughs> The six-year-old dragonborn is absolutely confused. Just completely gobsmacked. That's too good. Yeah, that was great. Excellent. I, I, I had to do what I had to do. I couldn't let him go see Runt and interrupt because, like I mentioned before, like Gein's headspace at that moment was just. I kind of want that guy to die in a way because I, like, I'm so upset at Clara's death. I gotta do something, but I don't want to like cause a fight in the middle of the street. So what else is there to do to stop a man but kiss him on the on the mouth? <laughs> it worked. Um, Aiden turned. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. You know, I think he was just blushing. I mean, that was a was, great reaction. Uh, I, um, I don't know how tall Kane or Aiden made Kane, but Gina's is short. She's like five one, five two. So if he was like really tall. She had to like just pull him down to do you that. Get it. You had the one leg up. We know what was going yeah, on. Yeah. All good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the moment, she wasn't thinking like you know. I I like this guy. That didn't happen until much much later. This is this is the only thing I can do to stop him. I'm not like runt. I'm not gonna like just intimidate a guy. I can't. I'm not really good at talking. <laughs> so what do I do? I just yeah. I'm a girl. I'll kiss him. I guess. I'm pretty sure surprise kissing counts as intimidation. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As a receiver of said intimidation, it 100% does. Yeah, I felt right. bad for it though later because I felt like, oh man, like you I don't tried... know Keen or I don't know how Kane is as a person, but for him to like be suddenly kissed in the middle of a walkway, like did I just make him super uncomfortable and like cross a line with him? <laughs> to cover up a murder. Not one, so whatever you did. To cover up a murder, yes. <laughs> That, that might be the line that was crossed is because yeah, he yeah, was covering yeah. up the murder i like how the murder meant nothing it was just like oh man it looks so bad oh also some guy's dead anyway yeah he earned it it's fine you know it's it's funny because you look at that i look back on that and you tried really really hard uh to to stop him from 
going over to see what Runt was doing. He slipped out of his gauntlet. You know, you were short of grappling him. You were just, which, you, you know, eventually you knocked him over, but you were trying everything in the book to get him to stop. And it's funny because we, you know, um, there's another moment that I'm thinking about where we had, where we had a Burgermeister in a town that had been, that had succumbed to the, 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 the charm of a woman who had then found her way into, into uh, meetings and had found her way into being an agent of Kara Thor. And at the end, um, I think she delivered one of the, I don't know. I mean, it's funny because you, you put these things together and we had a lot of cheese we were dealing with. And so oh, what no, are we going to do no. with all this, you know, this, this uh, cheese. And so, I mean, I'm, I can't say we do everything original when it comes to, when it comes to, to D and D, but I'm pretty sure nobody has done this. So everyone take 10 points of psychic damage. Right no, now. no, it's not psychic damage. It's fromage damage. Okay. Fromage oh. damage. You see Miss Penny Baywater uh, over near the 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 mayor great map um, and now standing near this this huge pile of cheese and she removes from her her sleeve a vial and pours it on the cheese and then she looks at you and dash, dash, dashes into the crowd so the first thing i will do though is kick over the cheese this is a huge pile of cheese, and you start to head towards it. It's, you know, the pile of cheese is 15 feet at its base and six feet high. It is a big mound of, of, of sweaty, greasy cheese. As you kick it, the cheese shifts. The cheese begins to right itself, and blocks begin to form, and this huge form begins to rise up from the, the this cheese, this massive construct, this Gouda Gollum, this Brie Brawler, this, <laughs> this feta cheese freak, and this um, Emmental Elemental. Um, the Pizza the Hut. Oh my god. Preacher, <laughs> uh, this cheddar competitor monster monster and the curds and whey monstrosity brie and swiss nemesis um i think by this point we all uh, need to take some psychic damage real quick (laughs) uh, it's great um he he does lay into him our havarti moriarty falls to his pat Pat has some good puns in there though bandages and then collapses back into this pile of wheels of cheese as soon as you uh had that cheese monster by himself right <laughs> he found himself provolone oh god this is our last um this, this, this. This. ceremony that will do. yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna call it there actually i think that's gouda i'm just gonna stop I'm not gonna okay. it anymore. um all right okay <laughs> I think that's good. I'm gonna stop there. Oh, I yeah. forgot about that one. I was I was in the chat and I kept trying to come up with more cheese puns and it, Oh you that beating. was you? That was me. That's me by the way. Oh yeah. that's funny. <laughs> oh now yeah. I'm putting two it together. Oh, okay. So I was like trying to fire another one off and nope, too slow. It comes with another one. Especially that I'm I'm I think that's Gouda and I was like, I can go. <laughs> <clears throat> so um so we try to keep it balanced. I mean, we've had some good times and we've had some fun times and we've had some romantic times and we've had some mystery and we've had a few other things. But I mean, we've also, we have these heavy, heavy moments and and I would say in the last few episodes, you know, the rhythm is picked up and as such, we're also able to find some time for people to talk get together and also to see these real epic things happening and um there's been a few that you know when we put them together and and producer you can you can back me up on this you know when we when we re-watch these things you know they're emotive 
Intense. they kind of matter and and we don't you know we're in the middle of it so we don't get to see it from somebody else's perspective so you know nolan becca as you're watching some of these things you're looking at it from the outside soon to be from the inside um but let's let's just watch this next one this is gonna be our last long clip for the night during this watch party so thanks everybody for for hanging in there um and we'll take a look and we'll uh, uh i just noticed that the screen went a little bit off here so I, I don't know if that means that we have to we have to pause but um producer you're running the show so yeah good we're gonna keep going um let's take a look at this clip and um i would say arguably it's it's been one of the most intense and so you know the 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 setup for this one is you know we have 30 children that have just gone missing we've got this boat right after this cheese monster that we've figured out that that's where the children are and it's left it's left without us and so now our party is stuck in Harrowdale and the townsfolk are pleading with them to go on a rescue mission so let's take a look at this because I think it's Run, you, <laughs> you peel your eyes up from the table and and you can see that the the burgermeister is standing there and he says something's happened come outside um, he leads you to the front of this tavern and there is a uh, one of the the gray guard and he gets down and he says i just received a note moments ago or to meet the city guard right now and he, he steps you aside again you see rogar and griffer being led out the, the door i was heading towards the door as soon then, as i left the table i was awesome. heading towards the door right on then uh you see a group of three gray cloaks uh, standing at the at the door um, and a swell of of citizens moving in behind them and one of the great cloaks swings himself down off his whole horse and he approaches the burgermeister and he says burgermeister yes tavin what is it children sir children have been stolen we just began to piece it all together as the reports from these parents coming behind me and others started to filter in. There's screaming mothers, fathers trying to console their wives. Um, there's sisters and brothers that are lost. They, the Burgermeister leans in closer with these three guys and, and then turns around to you and says, an acolyte a young priestess of Chantia is dead. One of San's group is dead. One of the mothers here from the town are dead. They were on a picnic. And they had 30 children with them from the temple and from around the, the town. They were taken earlier today. Nobody found out until their bodies were discovered. We began to piece it together. It appears they were loaded onto the shadow, shadow's glint, taken down river. Wait. How many mirrors was he making? Luke said 30, about 30. And he said these are young boy and girl's names. Yes. We need to get on that boat. You see the, the wagon of the High Harvestress now turning down the dock road and coming up beside you. My children, the High Harvester says, the time for you to go is now. You've heard what has happened. Uh, 
um, at the edge of the dock, you see that there is a receiving area and a, a, a dock cabin. And uh, an older man um, holding up a torch uh, as braziers burn behind him. Crates and, and dock goods lining around. Something being staged to be shipping, shipped out tomorrow. He comes up and he, he approaches the High Harvestress and he says... Your High Harvestress, what are you doing down at the docks this late at night? Hello, Navarin. I have people here in need of passage. Your fastest ship. This is the ship that Kale was asking about. The Dancing Sword, yes. The Dancing Sword is on its way. I have a man on the High Watch looking for it now. When it, round, when it rounds the head, we should be informed. But High Harvestress, it's it's full. It's I have this shipment ready to go. And it's loaded. It's loaded down with timber and ore. I'm just paid for for shipment, but there'll be penalties. Penalties for late shipment. We could lose some product. What's happened? What's going on? Why the sudden need to leave? not a lot of time to explain. Did you hear about the attack at the Burgermeister's speech? Yeah. And the member of the crowd, the members of the crowd who were two-faced. I heard someone killed Sweet Penny. Yeah, not so oh. sweet. She was working for the enemy the entire time. Well, I can get a ship arranged for you. It can be here in three days. Girl, we need to go now. This ship is full. The ship will be unloaded and reloaded. It's full of passengers and goods. They're all heading down. I mean, but, but, but don't have to ask. What? I mean... It's... Ten days. If the weather turns... Gloomy, it's... Six days at best to Westgate. I'd say... We just... Stop this guy... And push him into the water... <laughs> and then we take the I boat. forgot. Yeah. Okay. Fix all your yells. You know, the high harvestress has gotten up and she's gone into the back with uh, with uh, Griffero. I stand to lose a substantial amount of money on that, on this. The load alone is going to take us near an uh, near on a day to unload. It's ore. That's backbreaking work, right? And then there's the question of everything I'm going to lose out to. I'll see if it just killed this guy and tear his bird. I'm just saying, guys. <laughs> I'm an honorable dock keeper here. I... No, no offense to the buddy, but I mean, we're heroes and we got to go do some hero stuff. I don't uh, have. You this... can't be in the dick. I'm so surprised now, how okay? open Rent is to talk <laughs> to For everybody. For added now. effect, I'm just going to pull out my little wakizashi and just like she go towards here. his throat and be like, we need that boat. <laughs> the High Harvestress will put a gentle hand on the hilt with you and say be calm Navara Navarin I'm sure we can unload the boat for you he says we'll have to make some space I guess we'll have to make some space on the dock I need these wine casks brought back into the warehouse Rogar you and, and um, Griffero have been moving moment. barrels now uh, for 20 minutes. You, it's a huge um, pile of goods that are at the dock here. Uh, as the quiet, cra crowd begins to quiet, 
crying fathers begin to join you and muscle many of these goods working. Navarin's men begin to join in and and what would normally take, you know, the better part of four to five hours to move by a large contingent of people is, is quickly sorted away. The parents begin to simply look to the the river's mouth. The sun is almost um, down. The du- we're in the middle of the dusk hour and they're consoling one another and um, quietly talking. You can see the lookout far in the distance, high, high up on a, a high tower looking, um, eyes peeled. And everybody is just tensely waiting for some some sound that this boat will arrive. The dockmaster Navarin comes over and says, you've done good work, but for all I know, they could have been caught in a gale or delayed pirates. They may not be here tonight. You understand that? It's a tricky business, this. Or they may be late, or they may need repairs. I can't guarantee you anything. And he walks away frustrated, and you can see that he's feeling rather ashamed with his, his reluctance, which is from, er- from earlier. Um, I uh, will step away because he's put so much doubt now into my mind that I will begin to pray to Helm. Let's hear that prayer, Rover. Almighty Helm, he of the gauntlet, guardian of every give me strength in this time these moments of uncertainty I want you to finish Rogar and you don't see this although Runt and Gein you see this fathers and mothers sons and daughters brothers and sisters are assembling behind Rogar, facing the same way he's facing, and they begin to kneel behind him in rows, silently, hearing his words. Watch over these parents of Harrowdale. Send us swift winds. to catch this shadows glint and return their children home and all these things I ask you in your own mighty name you feel four hands on your shoulder your your armor And if you care to glance behind you, you'll see that each arm of the pious person in the various rows have now fanned out, all joined, hand on shoulder, hand on shoulder, hand on shoulder. And there has to be at least 90 to 100 people here. They're all arrayed on this flat dock front with you pointed in the direction of the river's mouth. The sun has now set. The clouds are silver in front on the edge of the water. And for a moment, you look up, and as every eye rises towards the skyline, it's as though a second sun glances off of them off of the clouds above it and in just this silver um, weave almost like a tapestry as the sun's rays just cast 
uh, upwards in in a mighty fan of light. And for a moment, you're awestruck by what you see. Silence is broken by a bell far above and the high tower. Voices behind you begin to murmur excitedly. Shep is coming in. There we go. Horizon to Shep. Look at those sails. <laughs> it's the dancing sword. You can see. Look at go. This. I just been escorted in. You can see this massive, massive sail on this boat, full of wind as if it's under full sail. In front of it, for a brief moment, Rogar, you see a silvery shape. It looks as though it's a boat in front of it, like a spectral boat. And as it moves towards the dock, and begins to cut sail and begins to lower th- its sails and begins to slow its approach, spilling off speed. That boat moves ahead of it and then evaporates into nothing. The boat, the dancing sword, is skillfully maneuvered up next to the dock. Lines are thrown. They are fast tied to the cleats, and the captain is shouting orders back and forth. They begin to pull the the this this boat closer in into the dock, um, and you can see that the the crew on top is moving back and forth. The high harvestress turns to you and says. Well, I suppose this will be goodbye. The dock is... is, The dock ramp is lowered. All the able-bodied people of this 90, including young children, begin to move in and swarm the various goods and the holds of of ore and... and, uh, carrying pails and using baskets and using their dress, dresses and aprons and anything that they can carry or in, they are emptying this boat as fast as you can imagine. Just a steady stream of hands helping and the, the ship begins to slowly raise up out of the water as the, 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 the weight is no longer displacing its load and you can see it sliding up and as if it's becoming two to three feet taller and the ramp is rising up. And then you really get a sense for its size and its sleekness and how large it is. And you can Mothers and fathers have gathered around you. Some are lining the ramp as you go up, wanting to touch you and shake your hand and just say thank you. Wish you well. Tell you their thoughts and prayers are with you. You will hop over the rail. No sooner do you do this than the the sheets fall, the lines are cast off, and the boat begins to move. And Harrowdale begins to fade. The sounds of the dock off in the distance. The high harvestress sightless, steely gaze still locked on the boat as you move away. Light begins to fade. Lanterns are lit, hung down over the side. Sailors' are, eyes are peeled as the darkness begins to settle in around them. And you head down the Dragon Reach. So, uh, we decided to, to end on that clip 
because for one, we got to see the paladin come out again. And, you know, we hand out beans here, right? And uh, Noel and Becca, you'll be familiar with this and soon be the recipient of your own. Uh, each of our players nominates the others when they really found their performance inspiring. Um, we didn't have it written like just like that if you can imagine and i mean this is and it's a good thing to end on because and i'm just gonna say something quickly here and then open it up to you so much of what happens in the moment is because of how you show up and brad pulling that out and just like you know having that happen um was one of those moments that's just inspired and and then it and then everything else cascades on it all of you have had that happen um so we're moving into season two if we want to call it that um we're on the we we, you know that ship was our was our mode of transportation into level six for the characters and and onto a whole new chapter of, of of you know what we're what we're going for we've said goodbye to burkle and we've we say goodbye to kane for now and and we're moving on so First to to Luna, Brad, and Shady. What what do you hope for? Just for a few moments. What do you hope for for season two? What do you want to see happening? More, at least for me, a lot of character development. There's with the new characters coming in and who they are. I, I've already mentioned it to Becca and Noel a little bit. Like, it's gonna create a lot of tension at first and then like some of the characters are going to be very similar in personality so I'm kind of interested in seeing how that's going to develop and create like let's say for example Runt who knows so I'm really excited to just see all that new interaction yeah and I don't think we know how you're going to play your characters out I mean it's really going to be up to you but that tension is going to be a source of sort of, you know, defining that. Yeah. Polishing it. Brad. I, um, I have to agree. Um, things along the lines of like the impromptu praying, um, this happens to all of us. We all have our, our little moments that just happened to be something that came to me. Uh, the long talk that um, Gein and Rogar had was particularly uh, profound because we got to cover a lot of ground again that we hadn't had the chance to, to cover because we'd been from one location to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And we had lost people and we hadn't truly um, come to terms with that. We had uh, uh, death. We hadn't really truly come to terms with that. Um, we have a, a mentor at a distance who only appears once every new moon. And uh, so... He's being chased by a specter. Yeah. Yep. Who's um, your dead friend? And, yeah. and so many loose ends, right? <laughs> yes. And, and that's... And that's the specter's it, it, one of them. I not to to tie them off uh, and and I guess now looking back hindsight being 2020 it would have been anticlimactic to have the sarcophagus holding <laughs> me so um <laughs> but um, it's never that easy it's never that easy no just like grim shackle yeah we exactly thought, we yeah. thought honestly if we were going to find Burkle at the top and just continue to go on and and uh no the the character development yeah i'm just kind of rambling at this point but um more of us coming together as a team but also feeling the tension that's coming up um and then getting beyond it to realize that there is a bigger picture and the bigger picture is uh made up of five people right now with you at the head Eighty. That I, I think we're going to see. There's a lot, of, a lot of those loose ends that need to be tied up. So, Shady, what what's on your mind? What loose end would you say you want to see 
tied up or um um no i'm just i'm really ready to help uh gain get to her sister for better or for worse Mm -hmm. and um i'm really excited to have uh new characters for runt to interact with regularly (laughs) sure Uh, i feel like there's i like there's so many things that are similar between our characters and the two new people coming on on like I don't want to give too too much away but I feel like these guys are similar these guys are similar they're going to possibly like feed off of each other in terms of things that they want to do or just habits or whatever but then you've got like the dynamic between the two new people and then the our characters reacting to that yeah. because you know that's affecting them personally like it's the, the the first half of I feel like whatever season two is going to be is going to be a uh, a lot of work. It'll sure. be a lot of testing of loyalties, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so uh, I'll give the last word. Oh, what I'd like to do is is we just have a few moments here left. We've got beans we hand out, and we're going to learn a lot more about Noel and Becca in the coming days. We're going to do a piece on. We're going to do a real in depth sort of a re-zero or whatever you want to call it, but we're going to explore each of the characters in turn. We're going to, we got um, some ideas about how we're going to bring that to you. But in a, in a few words, tell me Noel and Becca, if we're thinking about bringing the beans, if we're thinking about, you know, bringing inspiration and entering the game in a way that's going to really move it forward. What, what are you excited to do? That'll be inspiring. That is a loaded question. <laughs> that's, okay. say, that's a tough question. What are you, you going to aim to do? Let me put it that way. Like a dagger uh, to the back of the head there. Yeah. So um, what are you excited to do? Maybe that's even more. I fair. definitely think shaking up the group dynamics is going to be exciting because we have two very um, deep characters that have a long history. Mm-hmm. And um strong personalities strong personalities and it'll be very interesting to see how that shakes up what's already established yeah Yeah, that's the big thing it's like the mm -hmm. opposite to what uh what uh gene's been going through we were talking about that a couple nights ago we were like yes so weird that's gonna mess her up so badly Mm -hmm. yeah so I think too, it'll be interesting to see the character development with these two very strong characters that have this dynamic coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think it'll force everyone to take a look at kind of where they stand Mm -hmm. um, personally. Cool. No? I mean, yeah, basically almost the same. I'm also excited for Mr. Producer to start looking up some (laughs) ski shanties. (laughs) because <laughs> he's going to need it since i play the violin <laughs> i'll have to sing them myself i'll pitch my sh- voice uh, up uh, two octaves or there you go no up, up two and down three and i'll just sing all the parts myself <laughs> that'll work i mean we can do something we'll figure it out. <laughs> so i guess that that's it so you're you know we're, we're all going to be going for beans um we're gonna talk about that in just a second i want to give the last word and then I'll just wrap it up. The last thought to the producer here. We don't ever get to hear from him in um, uh, in the normal shows. So, Mr. Producer, what do you want to see in, sec- in, in season two? What are you excited for? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. Uh I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want to have some fun. Onward. 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 Good enough. Um, look, we don't have any beans tonight. We got the next best thing. Well, the reason I did this. Come on. I'm just kidding. No, but you know, beans, beans, the musical fruit. So I'll tell you what, as we say goodnight, uh, we're going to end oh, on a no. few laughs here. Um, so enjoy this. Feel free to laugh along, and we'll see you all next week. Okay? Great job, everybody. <laughs> Thanks very much. Oh, 19. You smell some sort of death. Oh, no. 
However, your ears soon pick up to the grumbling <laughs> sound, which is no uh-huh. longer a snore emanating from Griffero, but in- instead the sound of too many Chontian bean meals. Rogar, this face. So it wasn't even you the have your sound. own you potpourri <laughs> to was what got me. fall asleep to. Uh. I thought people of what did you say the clergy before were so. It's punctuation. I don't know. Clergy. <laughs> Magical, but Rogar he is so. <laughs> what, how do you say blunt and. That. Oof. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, uh, do you like want to see out there? <laughs> yeah. Tim, Tim's <laughs> face is turning so red. I, I started laughing so hard I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I, we we had to hold it together until right here. Was you can come hope. in our room. Bill can come in our room, <laughs> but I'm going just to my not room now. Okay, up. good night. <laughs> my color balance has gone all off. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't planned at all, by the way. This was spur of the moment. You know, I got a, I got a text. Like I've walked away. This. I'm in, should, in my room. Should Griffero fart? In the door and I'm like, with a yeah, slam. go for it. <laughs> uh, it's probably the day he found all of the free fart sounds. He's like, he oh, was certainly <laughs> in, in, you know, Cyrus, he, I uh, found him. I found him live, and I looked for the longest clips. Oh, I roll Constitution for <laughs> <laughs> he, asked me, he asked me to look at my character sheet I couldn't even see. I can't even see my sheet. Uh, 19. Oh, yeah, you're able to stomach it. <clears throat> <laughs> all right everybody well thanks very much for for sticking with us uh for this this watch party uh good night everybody we'll talk oh, yeah. to you soon and i'll uh, see you next week Bye. waving awkwardly <laughs> <laughs> uh, bye